If you like huge character rosters, comeback mechanics, and execution so strict to the point where you need to become a fighting game god in order to do basic combos, then you're in luck, because we're talking about Street Fighter 4 again. A while ago, I made a video about the home console release of 2010 Super Street Fighter 4, the first major update to vanilla Street Fighter 4. I love both vanilla and Super Street Fighter 4, and I have so many great memories of playing them and having so much fun as a kid. But deep within the depths of Capcom's game library, there exists an underrated and often forgotten version of Super Street Fighter 4. If you were like me in 2011 and went to EB Games to pick up your shiny new 3DS that was guaranteed to sell as well as the system that came before it, then there's a chance that you would have walked out of the store with this very fighting game. Released in early 2011, Capcom's Super Street Fighter 4 3D Edition is exactly that. The home console game, but on the 3DS. Just to go back in time for a bit, many fighting games, especially those released in the 90s and the early 2000s, received ports to handheld systems. Some of them are actually pretty good, and some of them are Guilty Gear X on Game Boy Advance. This sucks more than anything that has ever sucked before. 3D Edition, however, is arguably the greatest portable fighting game I've ever played, as it doesn't just look and sound great, but it also crams everything found in the home console version, as well as some brand new modes and features, into this tiny little 3DS cartridge. It's been a while since I've played this version of the game, so let's take a trip down memory lane and once again explore Super Street Fighter 4 3D Edition. Before we dive into the final product in detail, let's explore how it came about in the first place. Before 3D Edition even began development, Capcom was interested in porting Super Street Fighter 4 to either the DS or the PSP, but former series producer Yoshinori Ono felt that neither of these systems would satisfy his need to put the game on a handheld system. In an interview with the late Satoru Iwata, Ono revealed that the Street Fighter team was getting ready to distribute Street Fighter 4 as an iPhone app around that time. This one was also a very easy to use version that people could just pick up and play, but I didn't feel that it had reached out to a sufficient number of people. Shortly after, Capcom's very own game producer and planner Jun Takuchi rushed into the room and showed Ono a test build of Resident Evil 5 running on a dev kit of a 3DS. Inspired by this little handheld running a console quality game, Ono went to work, and after a few weeks of insane programming and black magic, there existed a version of Super Street Fighter 4 for the handheld. Capcom then showed this internal build to Nintendo, and they were like, Dude, we have no idea how you've gotten this game to run so well, you have to let us demonstrate this at E3 this year. And then Ono was like, eh, I don't know, I mean it's nowhere close to being finished, and it's still very early in development. Look, if you really want it, I'll let you show some pictures, but not a full gameplay demonstration or anything like that. Ono also decided to make the game more approachable for casual fighting game fans, and his way of doing this was by making the 3DS's bottom screen used during fights for players to pull off moves and combos, in addition to using the system's traditional button layout. In order to make the game run well at a constant 60 frames a second, some downgrades had to be made however. Stages are no longer rendered in real time with background NPCs running around to save on resources, and character facial expressions when being hit by a big ultra combo aren't as expressive as their home console counterparts, but other than that, 3D Edition is identical to the home console version. During my research for this segment about the game's development, I honestly couldn't find anything that indicated towards a troubled development. I estimate that the final game was finished in around one year, and for a development cycle as short as that, Capcom knocked it out of the park. 3D Edition contains all the modes found in the home console version, like arcade mode, challenge mode, training mode, and even online battles, but there's also some brand new content, so let's jump into that. First up is Dynamic Battle. This mode allows you to play the game with an over-the-shoulder camera angle that helps the system's 3D effect pop out more. Playing with the 3D on does halve the frame rate of the game, but it's still doable if you don't mind the unique camera angle. The over-the-shoulder point of view does make the game a bit harder to play, however, as it does affect the game's sense of visual clarity, and I was never quite sure of how close or far I was from an enemy as I attempted to make my way towards them. Despite this, I still think it's pretty awesome to see fights from a unique perspective. It may look a little bit janky, but having a completely new perspective on fights is a welcome addition to 3D Edition. The game also has these virtual figurines you can collect, and the idea was that if your system had Street Pass enabled and you passed by someone else with the game and some figurines of their own, your figures would battle. You can get new figurines by either trading with a friend or by indulging in this roulette wheel of sorts. You use virtual currency known as figure points, and you use them to spin the wheel. 
Winning street pass figure battles will net you figure points, so you'll want to have powerful figurines. There's also a password system that lets you unlock special types of figurines, and according to this chart I found, these passwords were given out all around the world in both online forums and in real life magazines, so you had to scour the internet to find them all before they were compiled into one page. I unfortunately never got to experience figure battles when I was a kid, but if I'm bored and need to kill some time, I occasionally like to whip out the 3DS and spin the wheel to see which figurine I can unlock. The figurines all have different poses and colour schemes, and honestly, this mode doesn't feel tacked on. Sure, it's supplementary to the main game, but it's a nice new mode to have that plays to the 3DS's strengths, and as a launch title, it's nice that this game tries to use as many of the 3DS's unique features as possible. Okay, now we're moving on to the most infamous part of 3D Edition, the controls. As Street Fighter 4 is a 6 button fighting game, the 3DS's 6 buttons are used to mimic the regular controller layout, so that's fine, no problems there whatsoever. However, the elephant in the room lies on the bottom screen. By default, you can perform two special moves, your super combo and your ultra combo by pressing these squares. Performing motion inputs on the 3DS's D-pad or circle pad can be imprecise at times, so the touch controls help in making your moves more consistent and deliberate. What people took issue with, however, is that you can map whatever you want to the bottom screen, and not only that, but the bottom screen's touch panels don't follow the rules of the game. Guile, for example, is traditionally a charge character, meaning you have to hold back or down for a second or two before being able to throw out a special move. Guile is not meant to be a character like Ryu who can walk forward and throw out a fireball or DP, but he is in 3D edition. By using the touchscreen panels, you can effectively ignore character logic and do whatever you want. If you want to play a rushdown Guile who never needs to charge, go for it. Things like this also applies to the other charge characters like E Honda, Balrog, Vega, etc. And to top it all off, this was allowed online. Even in ranked matches, you could pick any character you like and do otherwise impossible things with the bottom screen. Look, I know it's busted, but I love this for how crazy it makes the game, and also for the fact that 3D Edition was obviously never going to be the competitive standard, and I doubt anyone really cared about how many battle points they accumulated on 3DS Ranked. So yeah, look, I know the touchscreen controls completely break the game, but they're honestly hilarious and I will love them forever. They also make the game's challenging combo trials a bit easier to do, which helps me sleep at night knowing I can finish character trials on the 3DS, that I normally couldn't finish on PC, for example. Well, that was a lot of information that will definitely help you out in life. Look, I know I keep saying this, but 3D Edition is a wonderful port of Super Street Fighter 4, and it still surprises me that Capcom was able to port the full experience onto a handheld that released a year after the home console version did. It's a shame that Arcade Edition content and characters like Evil Ryu and Oni never made it into 3D Edition, but still, at the end of the day, what we're left with is a feature-rich fighting game with a diverse character roster, lots of fun modes, and some cool additions that never made it into future revisions of Street Fighter 4. I came to the realization that portable systems just aren't as popular as they used to be. Sony hasn't released a PSP successor, I don't blame them, and while the Switch could technically be considered a handheld, I don't count it as such because you can also use it as a home console system. So I wonder when one of these companies will put out a new dedicated handheld system. I'd love to see a portable version of Street Fighter VI for the Switch's successor, just to replicate the kind of same feeling that you can get of playing a home console version on the go, but who knows, only time will tell. Thanks for watching, I hope you had fun, and I'll see you in the next one.